Hi everyone, so today I would like to explain about the chapter from the practice of English language teaching by Jeremy Harmer entitled Managing for Success. So uh, let's get started. The first about why problems occur. When students come to class, they bring with them uh, their own personalities and their own learning expectation. Their behavior will also be influenced by their current circumstances and by what happens in the lesson. The problems of students influenced by several aspects. The first, the family. Students' experience in their families have a profound influence on their attitude to learning and to authority. Sometimes, indiscipline can be traced back to a difficult home situation. And then, learning experience and expectations. Previous learning experience of all kinds affect, uh, affect students' behavior. The expectation of what will happen can be colored by unpleasant memories on hand of unhappy class experience, and their behavior can sometimes be the result of what they were previously allowed to get away with. And then approval. A student's self-esteem may result partly from the way the teacher behaves. Children, children seem to thrive on a teacher approval and they are not alone. And then what teacher does? A lot will depend on how we as teacher behave in class. And then success and failure. Uh, success is a powerful agent for the sustaining, sustaining of a student's motivation. If they achieve in the identifiable uh, goals, our students are likely to remain engaged with what is going on. And then external factors. Students can be tired. The classroom is sometimes too hot, too cold, or too noisy. And then creating successful the classrooms. All groups uh, have ways of behaving and quickly establish norms for this behavior which delineate the ways things are done in the group. Therefore, about how we can get the students active agreement with such from norms, for, uh, for if we do so, they are far more likely to adhere to them rather than uh, feel they have been caught into obedience. There are three things we need to bear in mind in order to achieve this. The first is Norms need to be explicitly discussed. It is not effective just to tell our students to read a set of rules about what is considered to be normal and acceptable behavior. We need to discuss the rules with the class, explaining what they mean and why they are here. We might give the students a handout describing the kind of behavior we expect from them. And then norms can be jointly negotiated. If we, if we uh, really want our students to buy into a set of our, our uh, norms or of behavior, we will go further than just explaining them. We will actively negotiate uh, what should go into our, our list with our students by creating a jointly agreed code of conduct. And then norms need to be reviewed and revisited. When the students step outside the norm of uh, behavior, we need to be able to remind them of what we agree on. And then uh, the way we work in lessons and uh, the interaction we have with our students make a significant contribution to the success of a class. And uh, well, things are going well to successful learning. The first is be consistent. We and if we have established a code of conduct, we need to follow it consistently so that students know what to expect and what is expected. And then establish routine and procedure. Students take the great comfort from procedure they understand and routines they become accustomed to. And then know what we do and we are going to do. Rios Senior writes that class-centered teachers are aware of the need to gain the confidence of the students by demonstrating high levels of professionalism, professionalism and then plan for engagement. When we plan our classes, therefore, we need to think how we can engage the student in a reading or listening text before starting to deal work on it. And then priority success. Getting the level of challenge right is a major factor in effective classrooms. And then treat everyone equally. In any dealings with members of the class, the class has to see uh, what we treat everyone in exactly the same way. 
and then dealing with problems. Despite all our best efforts to create successful learning environments, things sometimes get uh, sometimes get out uh, get get off get out of hand, and students start behaving in an, in inappropriate ways or challenging the teacher. Therefore, the ways that we should do when dealing with problems are first act immediately. It is vital to act, Im to act immediately when uh, there is a problem, since the longer any type of behavior is left unchecked. And then keep calm. Calmness is one of the factors that contributes uh, to a successful outcome. And then get close and talk in private. One way of lowering the temperature is for the teacher to approach the student so that they are close and discussing a student's behavior in private and talking about how to improve it. And then focus on the behavior, not the students. We should take care uh, not to humili humiliate uh, an unco uncooperative student. It is uh, the behavior that matters, not the student's character. And then take things forward or sideways. Where a simple look or brief comment is not sufficient, we need to think carefully about how we respond. It is always better to be positive rather than negative. And then use clearly a great sanction. sanction. This means that the students uh, need to know what the penalties are for bad behavior. And then use the class. When things are getting badly out of hand, we can get the class to discuss the situation and reach some con consensus about what to do next. And then the last is use colleagues and, inst and the institutions when uh, there's a problem. We should try to work out exactly what is what it is and what is what it is happening and then consult our colleagues, asking them for guidance. When the problem is threatening to get beyond our control, we would be well advised to talk to coordinators, directors of studies and or principals. Okay, so that's all from me. Thank you and see you.